today, Tilly Fox will be teaching you how to set up a switch that is developed from a company called Xi Excel. I could be wrong, but uh, we will be focusing on the model, the eight port switch here. So the first things that you want to do for this switch, you want to plug your ethernet cord into this port, port one. Then you want to configure your system's IP address to get the default IP of the switch. So you could do that by going into your control panel, typing network settings, or clicking on network settings. And then you want to change your Ethernet 4. So we go here to Ethernet 4. We do details. And we want to change this to reflect the appropriate IP scheme of the switch. So let's open up Internet Protocol version 4 and then click on use the following IP address. So we need to assign it in the 192.168.1 scheme. So we'll give this a 33. Go ahead and press tab once. And then the default gateway. So the default gateway is 192.168.1.3. Let me just check that in the documentation over here. Yes. So this would be the gateway of the switch. Right here, this IP address, 192.168.1.3. So press OK. Then what we want to do is pull up an internet browser and type up the IP address of that switch. And that was 192.168.1.3. All right, so as you can see, we're at the IP address of 192.168.1.3. It brings us to the switch login interface. So we just type in the default password for the first time. That is one. Two, three, four. You sign in, and then from here you want to create a brand new password. Okay, now that we have the new password, we want to click on apply. And now we enter in the switches interface. So as you can see, we only have one port connected. From here we want to do a few things. First, we want to go ahead and click on port. And let's go ahead and enable broadcast storm. And we will go ahead and change the value to about 5,000. Loop prevention. We click on that to prevent any loops in the switch. So that's if you have a cord from the one port of the switch plugged into another port. So say for example, two was plugged into three, that would be a loop. So loop prevention prevents these two ports from disabling the whole switch. Click on apply. From here, we could add flow control for each port. So definitely want to do that. Let's go ahead and add port control and flow control for each device. Then from here, you could disable ports. So it's a good practice to disable any ports on a switch that are not being used. So say, for example, you have a 50 port switch and you're only using about 37 ports on that switch. You want to disable the other 13 ports on that switch. So that way no one can just plug in and change the configuration settings or mess with the network. Click on apply. Give it one moment here. All right, there you go. So we have the states enabled for all ports. The speed and duplex could be set manually if needed. However, we keep it on auto and flow control we have enabled on all ports. Next, we go to VLAN. All right, so from here we could add a port virtual ID. So for each port uh, VLAN, we could add a specific number. So right now, VLAN 1 is the native port for this device. It's on port 1. It's active for all ports. To make multiple VLANs, we want to click on Create New VLAN. From here, we add the VLAN ID. 
and then we just tag or untag each member. And then from there, you could create a VLAN table that reflects the kind of VLAN separation for this device and for your network. You can create up to two, uh, 32 VLANs. Okay, now that I configured the PVID, we could see all the numbers. So number one, uh, VLAN one is for administration. As you can see, only ports one and two are part of that profile. The rest of the ports cannot access the administration cause. And then we made some changes here. Number three is going to be the trunk port that's going to be delivering internet. So we want to tag that for all VLANs. And then I created new VLAN IDs and assigned the ID number. So that's a similar way to craft your network to have each port on a different VLAN. But still have a truck trunk port for your internet services. Next we will go to link aggregation. From here we could select the MAC source address and the destination address or just the MAC address uh, destination or just the MAC address source. But we will keep it default and we could either choose to aggregate ports 3 and 4 or ports 7 and 8. So we will go ahead and aggregate ports 7 and 8. Okay, as you can see, link aggregation group, port 7 and 8 are now aggregated. And you would use that in the case scenario for two servers connected together. I'll go ahead and show you how that's done in just a moment. So as you can see, link aggregation, you have two NIC cards on your server. You aggregate that and that connects to the switch to guarantee good throughput. Next is mirroring. Mirroring is a pretty powerful tool. We can do this by clicking on enable and we want to select what ports we want to mirror. And so the monitor monitoring port will be port six and then we want to mirror the rest of the ports. So we click on apply. Okay, as you can see, we enabled the port mirroring. It's in both directions. And the port 6 is where you would plug in your Wireshark program or your hacking tool to be able to get a copy of all the traffic sent on the following ports. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's how you would mirror your ports on your server and on your switch. Next is the quality of service. So from here, we could change the IEE 802.1p quality of service setting, or we could do it by port. So this is the port number, and then you would basically set it to the queue. So say, for example, I want three to have the best connection and maybe the two aggregate ports. Then we want the Port 1 and 2, which is the administrator's ports, to be on the lowest queue with the lowest weight because they don't really need a lot of traffic flowing through that. And then the rest you could set by the priority of that port or that service. So for port 4 and 5, we will set to Q1, put the weight of 2, and then Q2, uh, we'll do port 6 and weight 4, and then click on apply. So what this will do is it will deliver traffic based on the priority. And the priority for this queue is 3, 7, and 8. It has the highest weight. And then so forth. Next, we want to click on IGMP snooping. We want to enable that. And then select unknown multicast drop. And we go ahead and select auto. So it says while link aggregation is enabled, the lag ports cannot be set to a static router port. L, uh, lag 1 port 3 and lag port 7 8. And last but not least is management. Here I change the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway. And then we want to also enable this feature right here. Uh, the connection was reset. Just give me one moment. 
Okay, as you can see, everything is enabled. This protocol is enabled. This is a type of protocol probably for delivering traffic. So let's go ahead and pull that up here. Yeah, it's designed to save power when there's no traffic on the link. And so it basically reduces the power of the switch when ports are not being used. Now the final few bits, you could change your password here. Unfortunately, this switch, it doesn't allow you to have a username, so you can't set a list of users. Uh, say you want multiple administrators to log into this switch at certain points of the day. You want different usernames. You can't do that with this switch. Um, and then also you can't do a few few things that Cisco switches or some more powerful switches could do. Then from here, we could reboot in the management section. We could reset we could update the firmware or we could back up our configuration. So that's everything for this server, the GS1200-8. It's an eight port switch. Has pretty good functionality, not as powerful as Cisco switches, which we might take a look at in feature videos. And that's basically it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, and don't hesitate to contact Tilly Fox for all your consulting needs. You have a good afternoon.